The test is in four part, part 1, part 2, part 3, and part 4. Now look at part 1. Part 1. You will hear part of a lecture about studying history. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 3. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 3. Good morning, everybody. I'd like to begin this term's lectures with a discussion of the various sub-disciplines in history. Before I do that, though, can I refer you to the handout you picked up on the way in? It deals with two general topics. The first is, why study history? And the second is, what is history? Neither of these questions has an easy answer. In fact, people have been asking these questions for as long as history has been studied. However, as you are mostly new students to this subject, and we have some students of economics with us also, I feel you should have some background to these basic questions. Anyway, it's all in the handout. I might add that for me personally, the most important reason for studying history is that I find it exciting. Our ancestors can remain, if we want them to, a mystery, a closed book, a blackness that we never see into, or we can come to know what motivated them and discover how that led to the world we live in today. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 4 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 4 to 10. Now answer questions 4 to 10. You who have chosen to pursue the study of history are very fortunate. This is a time when we can talk not just about history, but histories. Traditionally, history was seen as one subject, and the subject matter was clear. It was about kings and queens and wars. Additionally, it was about states and empires, or groups of states. This is what we now call political history. The subtopics were the parts of the world, for example, the history of China or of France. History has moved on somewhat, and we can learn a lot about current views of history by looking at the proposed lecture topics in our leading universities. In fact, you'll see that even the simplest definition of history – that it is about what happened in the past, is up for grabs. Some of the more, how shall I put it, progressive areas of study are as much about what should happen in the future. One example of this is the field of postmodern history. Likewise, feminist history looks at the past to make sure the future will be different, and it uses the past to assist in its efforts to make the future as it wants it to be. Somewhere in the middle of these two extremes lie a range of areas of study which have developed over the modern period, replacing the traditional idea of political history. These are by now mostly well established. You can study social history or economic history. Social history asks about the ordinary people and their lives, not just their daily lives, but their contribution to changes in our society. Ordinary people have desires and wishes which they try to put into effect, and this has a massive effect on social development which was not fully understood in the traditional study of history. By the way, one area of traditional history which I forgot to mention, but which has had a resurgence of interest in recent years, is the area of military history. This was, of course, of great practical use in more violent times, and unfortunately has become of increasing use and interest, academically and practically, in our own times. By the way, there is a new series of lectures on military history in our department, as if to demonstrate the truth of what I have just said. 
Ethnic and multicultural history are further examples of kinds of history which, like social history, differ from the traditional forms. Ethnic history is a modern concern which concentrates on the value systems and beliefs of a people, usually a minority people, which were ignored in the rapid forward march of the rich and powerful nations and states. How various ethnic groups live together and how their traditions change and develop is the subject of its contemporary cousin, multicultural history. In sum, as I said, you are fortunate to have such a wide choice of things to study in the fields of history. Choose wisely. And finally, it only remains for me to wish you good luck in your studies. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. There a discussion between a college receptionist, Denise, and a student named VJ about learning a language. In the first part of the discussion, they are talking about the course VJ will study. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 17. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 17. Hello. May I help you? Hello. Uh, is this the right place for me to register to study foreign languages? Yes, it is. May I have your name, please? Vijay. My family name is Paresh. Vijay Paresh. OK. Do you have a telephone number? Yeah. 909-2467. Thank you. Now, which language would you like to learn? We offer French, Italian, Cantonese, Mandarin, Spanish, Portuguese. Uh, I'd like to learn Spanish, please. OK. Our classes are conducted in lots of different places. We have classrooms in the city and here in this building. What's this building called? This is Building A. I work near here, so it'd be best to study in Building A. What time do you want to come to lessons? They go on for three hours and they start at 10 a.m., 4 p.m. and 6 p.m. I wish I could come to the daytime lessons, but I can't. So 6 p.m., please. That's our most popular time, of course. Um, have you ever studied Spanish before? No, I haven't. We describe our classes by level and number. Your class is called Elementary 1. OK. Uh, when will classes start? Elementary one begins... Uh, just a minute. Uh, it begins on August 10. Great. Now what else do I have to do? Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 18 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 18 to 20. I'm sorry, Vijay. What were you saying? I wanted to know what else I had to do. Oh, of course. Please go to the building on the other side of Smith Street. I want you to go to the reception area first. It's just inside the door on the left as you enter from Smith Street. Give them this form. Okay. Do I pay my fees there? 
No, but the fee's office is in the same building. Go past the escalators, and you'll see a games shop. It's in the corner. The fee's office is between the games shop and the toilets. Thanks.、Uh, where can I buy books? The bookshop is opposite the lifts. It's right next to the entrance from Robert Street. Your offices are spread out. Not as badly as they used to be. By the way, we offer very competitive overseas travel rates to our students. Oh, I'd like to look into that. Of course, the travel agency is at the Smith Street end of the building, in the corner next to the insurance office. Thank you very much. Bye. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Three, part three. You will hear a tutor and some students talking about an assignment. Listen carefully and answer questions twenty-one to twenty-six. Come in. Sit down. Good to see you. Hello. Hello. Now this assignment. The best thing we can do, I think, is to think how we can approach it. The main point is to investigate television, but not what's happened in the past. I was thinking that it would be necessary to go over the new media first,、mm. and then. Yes, that's a way to make a start. But you need to do that quite briefly. But it's quite a complex topic. Yeah, I agree. But the emphasis must be on the future development of television as a cultural phenomenon. Yes, I've been reading the talk by Ashley Highfield. All right, and what do you take from that? What are the things that are competing with television? Well, to start with, there is the games console. Then there is the personal computer and the internet.、Um, then again, the mobile phone with its capability of games and puzzles.、Mm. Um, and of course, internet access. Lastly, there is the iPod with the possibility of listening to music wherever you go. Good, you've understood that. Now, which of these presents the greatest competition for television? Well, according to the research, it's video games. Yes, that's true at present. But in the future, I think the phone will present the greatest threat then. And why? Because it's mobile, portable, and it's developing fast. Yeah, I think you're right. You need always to look to the future and try to assess how things will develop, as we said. Good. Now you need to move on to the new social trends in connection with television. Is one of them the idea that programs might become shorter and shorter? Ah, yes. The, the average program might be ten minutes, or even less. Just mini programs, say four to five minutes long. Now. Do you think you can get access to all the materials you need? The problem at the moment is the library. Oh yes, what's happening there? There's a tremendous amount of noise because of the new extension they are building. It's quite impossible to work there. They are stopping work for a week next week, I believe, and then all the sections will be open. There's a holdup because some roof tiles have not arrived, so there'll be peace for that week. But then after that, the media studies section will be closed for a week, and all the noise and dirt will start up again. Yes, the sociology section will be open, and there's some good stuff there for you on this topic, and it's further away from the noise.、Mm. Yes, I don't think the sociology section is affected at all, and neither is the journal section. No, 
Obviously, they're rotating the closures, and it was sociology's turn to close for a week last term. I think we should make a complaint. Yeah, I think you should. I've had a word with the library staff. They are very sympathetic, but well, they are affected by these works just as we are. If I were you, I'd make a complaint directly to the premises committee. They only meet once a year, but in fact, I know they're having a meeting next Tuesday. You might like to make contact with them, but don't say that I suggested this. <laughs> yes. The students' union might be better since they are independent of the university. That's true, but I can't imagine that people haven't already approached them about this.、Mm. Let's try the premises committee. Good idea. Why not? Okay. Now, don't forget, I need a copy of your dissertations by email and two copies in print. That is on paper. If you give the reprographics office twenty-four hours' notice, they'll make copies for you. And if you give them my details, they'll send those copies directly to me. They won't send copies to you, so you'll need to take your own copy personally from them. Good. Any questions? Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions twenty-seven to thirty. Now answer questions twenty-seven to thirty. One little thing was just that I wondered whether we should actually talk about that famous website, you know, the one YouTube. Ah, I was rather hoping you hadn't overlooked that. <sighs> Good point. It's mostly homemade videos. I suppose you could say that each video is a television version of a podcast. Anything else? Yes, I've got a question. I'm afraid, I'm not completely clear about the exact meaning of culture. As we are using it in this subject. Well, Mrs. Jones is giving a lecture on culture and society in the University Theatre. It's on Wednesday at 10 a.m., and you can learn all about it there. I'm sure. Can you give us that again, please? Yes, that's culture and society. It's in the University Theatre, and、um, let me just check the time. Yes, here it is, 10 a.m. on Wednesday. She'll be giving a very thorough discussion of the issues in defining what culture means. Right. That's good.、Uh, the thing is, the reading list confused me a bit. One thing that occurred to me was that it might be broken down into subsections for future students. Yes, that's a fair point. I'll bear that in mind. Now, don't forget, you need to do the reading and finish the assignment by the fourth of July. Is that okay? Fine. Thank you very much. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute. To check your answers. Now turns to part four. Part four. This morning. I'd like to look at the whole issue of contemporary art: what it is, how do we interpret it, what are its uses, and does art, in effect, have any advantages or disadvantages for society? First, you have some time to look at questions thirty-one to forty. Now listen carefully and answer questions thirty-one to forty. Welcome to this series of lectures on interpreting contemporary art. This morning, I'd like to look at the whole issue of contemporary art: what it is, how do we interpret it, what are its uses, and does art, in effect, have any advantages or disadvantages for society? I think at this point it's important for me to clarify that I am looking at art from two main perspectives. Firstly, 
art as something made by and appreciated by individuals, and secondly, art's relationship with society, as it is society that supports, protects, and encourages art. And I'm hoping that this lecture will act as a springboard for you to revisit your own artistic experiences and question your own ideas of what contemporary art means. Throughout this series of lectures, I'll be looking at various examples of art to illustrate my points. However, if at any point I show you an example which is unfamiliar, then please tell me, as it is imperative that you be able to use your past experiences so that you can check to see if your ideas agree with mine. So, if you have not seen a particular work of art before, then this will not work. And let me remind you now that at the end of these lectures, you will be given a written assignment which will consist of a 2,500 word critical essay. This is not an art review, but an analysis of what you think this kind of art means. Okay. So, what is contemporary art? Well, my view is that contemporary art reflects a particular time in history. In terms of Western civilization, this is the period that became known as the Renaissance, which began roughly in 1450. But this becomes confusing as the modern era is also considered to be from 1789, from the time of the French Revolution. Added to this are modern ideas and modern art that developed from 1890. This period has also been called the turn of the century. To try and somehow bring all these periods together, I shall define contemporary art as any art created from 1920 up until the present day. Turning now to the question of whether or not art is useful for society. Uh, well, when we look back at the history of the West, we can see that there has been a tradition, especially in Western Europe, of art that was official. This meant that the government sponsored or subsidized the art. It could be said, therefore, that art has a cultural use, in that it can represent both the culture and history of a country. And um, let's remember what I said earlier, that this is both the history and culture of a particular time. Now, the disadvantage of this kind of official art is that it tends to be academic. And by that, I mean it is art that requires the person looking at it to be educated in art, at least to some extent. So it seems to me that this restricts this type of art to a particular social group. And whether you agree with this concept or not will depend on if you believe that art should be accessible to everyone. Of course, with the rapid developments in technology and advertising, the television, computer and various forms of digital media, art has changed. And although there will always be a need for art to be subsidized by governments, we see today art forms that are surviving on individual subsidy. Sometimes this is through the support of wealthy patrons, such as businessmen or famous people. But it also operates on a more simple level. Uh, I refer here to the art that is done on walls and in streets, sometimes called amateur art. But it is the art of graffiti, and it is now accepted as an art form in itself. So here we come to what I see as another advantage for society in that art is a means by which people can express their ideas, their feelings. Of course, in the case of graffiti, there is much debate as to whether the advantages outweigh the more negative side, which is when graffiti artists paint on public buildings. This creates unnecessary expense and also damages these buildings, which are meant for public use. We will be looking at some examples of this later on. Now, many critics of contemporary art have pointed to art that is often violent and uh, even obscene. But I would like to suggest that such art is not meant to only shock us. It also has the element of exposure, so it can teach us about the violence in society. This then brings us to another advantage of art. It can raise awareness, help us see things in a different light, the disadvantage of this is that art can be dangerous. Um, 
What I'm saying here is that if we accept that contemporary art has the power to influence our feelings and attitudes, then we have to accept that art can evoke negative feelings like anger as much as it can give us feelings of hope and peace. But art is, after all, about us. So it can be about our beliefs and our behavior. And as human beings, we possess both positive and negative traits. I'd like to show you some slides now to illustrate what I've been talking about. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. is the end of the test. You now have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to your IELTS listening answer sheet.